Bengals Browns part two crossover part two. Let's get into the biggest stories and biggest matchups as the Bengals seek revenge against the Browns in week 14. You are locked on Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. It's time for the Cleveland Browns to visit the Cincinnati Bengals on the banks of the Ohio River and on crossover Thursday, Locked On Bengals, Locked On Browns coming together for the biggest stories, the biggest matchups and predictions for this Sunday's game. Jeff Lloyd from Locked On Browns joins myself, Jake Lisko, and the other host of the Locked On Bengals podcast, James Rapine, for this episode of Crossover Thursday, presented by our friends, at Prize Picks, Prize Picks is so fun, so easy to play. We've told you about it all year, but if you're new, you pick two to five players and whether they're going to score more or less in their Prize Picks projections, that's all you need to do to win up to 10 times your money on your entry that you can put in in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. We love Prize Picks. We know you will too. First time users can get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 right now with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on as always part of the lockdown podcast network here on lockdown Bengals and lockdown Browns. And you can find us anywhere you get your podcast and on YouTube and join that first listen club that I like to talk about on the lockdown Bengals podcast. And Jeff, it's been a few weeks since we've last talked and seasons have diverged for these teams, but there's a new quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. And that's certainly something in the eye of the national media that is being watched. Is that the biggest story going on? this week in Cleveland, or is there something else that we should be aware of? Uh, there's no way. And, you know, the way the season started and, you know, certainly Jacoby Brissett to his credit played well. Um, they did not play well enough. Um, not dead yet. Still have a puncher's chance. Um, we'll find out more. Obviously this week will probably tell the tale, but for the Browns, they're going to go out there and play week in, week out. We still have people asking questions like, um, would you play Jacoby Brissett in a game like, you got $238 million invested in this guy. He is the guy. And as much as 2022 may not be the year, it's about 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, of course. Um, certainly rusty. Uh, there, and I think a lot of us probably under undersold how rusty he was going to be coming back 700 days away. I mean, there's just no way to do it. Plus going back to Houston, even though the environment was not you know that crazy, it wasn't really a packed house. Um, still, you know, work to be done for Deshaun Watson, um, you know, timing, you know, he's going to get another guy back this week. David Njoku is going to be back into the lineup here this week. Um, so it was, it was a process. And I think for me, the thing you saw right away is the athleticism that was there. You saw the game speed, the play speed that he has over Jacoby Brissett. Those were all stuff that you know, stood out. Um, the you know, word was today practice looked a little crisper for him. Uh, and these things are just, they're going to have to pick up. You know, there is everything is invested in Deshaun Watson, including the front office, the coaching staff. Everything is invested in this guy and this succeeding. Um, and it is kind of weird because Amari Cooper had such a nice season going. Don Peoples Jones, we've seen growth uh, here in year three that we haven't seen to this point. Um, so he's got to get on the same page as these guys. You know, the Browns, you know, calling colors always been they can run the ball, uh, have great offensive line as far as the running game is concerned. Um, they had two receivers who were contributing along with David Njoku here. Um, they got to get him right. And then the faster he gets right, the better it is for the Cleveland Browns. Cause they're also in a, a spot here where they're kind of, kind of selling this team over the next five weeks to prospective free agents. Um, so there's a lot going on here, but yeah, I mean, there is no other story Cleveland Browns right now, other than Deshaun Watson, yeah. which let's be honest, it was always the story. Yeah. Mean, meanwhile, Bengals wise, it's well, twofold. First of which suddenly after, you know, a four and four start and, and a lot of questions after that Monday night game, they're eight and four and you're looking, ah, oh, can they make a run at the one seed? Can they make this push to not only win the division for a second straight year, but maybe get a top seed or one of the top seeds in the AFC playoff race. But the reason I say twofold and Jeff, man, every Cleveland hit I do and some Columbus hits this week, it is all, Hey, is Joe Burrow finally going to get over the hump? Is he, is he going to get past the Cleveland Browns? He can't. That's the bar that's holding him back. <laughs> that, right. Yeah. So that that's the other narrative that honestly, 
I just wanted to end. So I stopped having to, so selfishly for me, I don't have to answer questions about it because I don't think it's as big of a deal as, as some, but the reality is, is Joe Burrow is 0 and 4 in starts against the Cleveland Browns and the Bengals have lost five straight to Cleveland, whether it's fair or not, if it context needed, doesn't matter. It's still 0 and 5. And so with the Bengals not fighting for their playoff lives like the Browns, but you know, trying to make a push to to be one of the top teams in the AFC. I think uh, Sunday is a huge, huge game and breaking the streak, snapping the streak, whatever you want to say, and winning in the Battle of Ohio. It's a it's a big matchup. It's a huge game for this Bengals team. And James, in terms of ping pong watch in Cincinnati and the great tweet that uh, I, I don't remember who tweeted it, but was like every year there's a story about an NFL locker room that has a ping pong table and they take it away when things need to get serious. And it comes back out when, when things are going well again, there were some, some whispers and, and some, I, I think conflicting. Jay tweets. Morrison, wasn't it? Jay Morrison. It, it went right? both ways. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was Jay among others, but uh, was the ping pong table out or is it truly put away for this week? Are they, are they oh my God. locking in? See, if Jay <laughs> said this, I'm going to have some words with Jay. That's where See, I he, he, Here's the problem. Here's the problem is stuff like that because this Browns Bengals, whatever the heck you want to talk about is really two games burrow balled out as a rookie against the the Browns. He kicked their tail. It's just the Bengals stunk. And so that's why he was Owen two against them. Obviously he didn't play in the final game last year and uh, was bad against them in two games. So that's what it is. The context needed two games. Anyways, the ping pong tables weren't in there. That's happened multiple times this season. They're going to be in there later this week. I I, I don't know why. I, I think maybe they had like the cleaning crew come in in like vacuum or something. So they moved the, the ping pong tables. Like Jermaine Pratt was talking about, hey, let's play. Let's get a game in today. He was talking. Uh, I forget who he was talking to. He was like, no, I don't want to go get those out right now. This is not a, oh, we're, we're we're changing the way we do things ahead of this matchup against the Browns. Yeah. Not that they're not taking them serious, but this Bengals team, whether they had won four straight or lost four, straight, I, I don't think they, they change what they do. And they certainly, they play football. They also play ping pong. So I, we'll see the ping pong tables this week. I just thought it was funny. I, I no, hope I, that my, my sarcasm was apparent to all of our you. listeners. Th- um, that will go. You know how it is, though. That'll be. Oh yeah. my gosh, the Bengals are. They, they're so serious about the. That, no. that that's why I referenced that tweet about the tables coming in and out and, and how funny oh. it is because it happens every year. Every. But here's every the other year. thing. And the, the, the silliest thing is, is we know how superstitious you know, f- sports in general is. If they are four and zero, oh, if anything, they were adding a ping pong table. They were not taking any of them away right now. Yeah, that's right. And that's and to to their credit. Because, James, you mentioned this. They are taking it seriously. And I, I think that you've yeah, heard that sure. throughout the building. Uh, ping pong tables are not. From from Joe Burrow to Jesse Bates to Zach Taylor to, to you name a guy, they're all aware of what's happened in the last two games these teams have played earlier this year in the first game last year when the starters played for these teams, when the Bengals have felt like they are a playoff or and or Super Bowl contender, depending on the timing of those games. And so... I think they know what's at stake here. The Bengals are looking to run the table. I think, right? And and I think that's their goal. It's got to be a well, sure. Yeah. And they they're looking to keep their home win streak going. They've been really good at home. I mean, I know they had the the week 1 game. But outside of that, they've been really good at home. So, uh, I think they're looking for those things to happen and there's some big matchups, right? The Browns pose some problems to a lot of teams to be fair. In these two guys we're going to talk about, in these two matchups we're going to talk about, or at least that I want to focus on. We'll see what what you guys have in mind. But DJ Reader playing this time mm-hmm. against that Browns running game and the Miles Garrett-Jonah Williams matchup. I think both of those go a long way in dictating how this game goes. So let's get into those matchups here coming up next. Wyatt Teller also playing. This episode brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we're sure you're going to love. That's why you'll be able to find a sneak peek of Block Forever available on Locked On NFL right now. Block Forever is a brand new podcast from former NFL All-Pro Ryan Khalil and Audible. He sits down with players, coaches, former pros across the league to get real about what happens on the field, behind the scenes, in the locker rooms, during team meetings, really takes you 
inside the game. Ryan and his guests discuss topics like player psyche, sports betting, playing through pain, being leaders, and so much more. So head over to Locked On NFL for a sneak peek of Block Forever or catch the full series available wherever you get your podcast. Available everywhere now. Audible. Get in the game. Let's talk matchups, Jeff. And, and I'm going to let you pick which one we talk about first. And I'm going to let you pick which one you think is more important because I think these are both huge. Obviously, it's more than just DJ Reader. It's DJ Reader and the rest of the Bengals' front seven in defending the run. And even Mike Hilton, who's been great against the run lately from a Bengals perspective. Or the, the Miles Garrett Jonah Williams matchup, where Miles Garrett has been an absolute game wrecker at times and certainly was the first time these teams played this season. To you, which of those do you think goes a longer way in, in dictating the outcome of the game? Or is there a dark horse I'm not thinking about that you think is, is more important that we should talk about here? I think we'll stay with start with the Miles Garrett matchup. And here's the reason why. Because anything offensively for the Browns, this is obviously new for the Bengals. Um, you know, seeing Deshaun Watson here, you know, this is completely unfamiliar territory. Um, normally it was Baker Mayfield, obviously, you know, uh, Case Keenum once last year, and then earlier this year was Jacoby Brissett. Um, but if you're just a Browns fan and you don't watch other games, so you watch these Browns Bengals matchups every year, everything comes away with Jonah Williams should not be playing left tackle for anybody in the NFL. That's usually the way these games go. This is the way these games look. And then you look not over the, the time. That's then 50, you look 50. at the other the full body of work of Jonah Williams, the other 15, 16 games for a year, and it's like, well, yeah, sometimes guys struggle against Miles Garrett. Um, Miles Garrett, for whatever the reason is, it seems some of his best work has always come against the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, and even in the first meeting this year, the way he was able to play and the Browns switched some things up in that game. That's when you saw Sione Takitaki starting to see some Mike action and they were using him more in nickel and dime. Obviously, that's not going to be a factor now with Sione Takitaki uh, tearing his ACL and he's out for the year. Now the Browns are now on middle linebacker four and five. Um, that'll be who playing for them. But you saw Isaiah Thomas, you know, get some nice reps in. Uh, Alex Wright. So, you know, Miles Garrett, even if he doesn't win the matchup every time, even if he's not the one making the play, and look, the key here to beating the Cincinnati Bengals is to try to get Joe Burrow out of the game. If you can get Joe Burrow off his game or you can get him to the point where he becomes a spectator, that that's usually what the recipe would be to beat the Bengals. So that, I, for me, that's always got to be the matchup, especially with the wild card on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, for Miles – you know, it's been a tricky year. You know, obviously the you know the car accident early in the year dinged him up. Uh, he's still dinged up. Um, but again, look, there's no excuses this time of the year. And a lot of guys would say, hey, I'd sign up to be 85% of Miles Garrett and I'll go have his career for the rest of, you know, so I'll go be that guy for the rest of my life. Um, so for me, that's always the most important matchup. And that's kind of been the case here, you know, over the last, you know, I guess we're at five games now to be the sixth game. Of course, Joe Burrow's only been a part of a part of four of them. But that's always, you know, been the thing it, it, is Miles has seemed to be like the brightest star in a lot of these matchups when, you know, the Browns and the Bang Bengals get together. Um, you know, for the Bengals, obviously, this is a big one here, four in a row. Um, and now, obviously, for Cincinnati, probably seeing a little bit more light towards that AFC North title, a little bit more light towards maybe a possible top, number one seed with Lamar Jackson in the situation in Baltimore with his knee and see the way that works out. Cause I don't know how quick Lamar is going to be there to hurry back out on that field for that team. No coming money whatsoever. It's kind of got a Robert Griffin feel to it from back in the day when he was with the Redskins, they put him out there injured and that was it. Robert Griffin never was anybody again afterwards. Um, but for miles, it, for me, it has to be, it has to be miles Garrett, Jonah Williams. Cause if you can disrupt the passing game for the Cincinnati Bengals, take some of it away because you don't allow Joe Burrow the opportunity to scan the entire field, the opportunity to nail a third and 14 to T Higgins to send Kansas city out of here. Um, if you can do that to a Joe Burrow, that is your best recipe. That is your only recipe probably to beating him. Sure. Yeah. I, I think keeping Joe Burrow upright is, is obviously a huge, huge key every week, but we know it. Miles Garrett, Jadavian Clowney, keep them at bay. Obviously it starts with Garrett ends with Garrett. Uh, in the Bengals game plan, but the matchup, let's be honest here. And like on Bengals listeners know the matchup that I'm paying most attention to is Sione Taki Taki, the most important player from the, Never mind. Go ahead. He's on yeah, IR they, by the way. Yeah. That was a bad joke. You were trying to be funny. And then I think it's, I'm just pointing out that he's on IR. He played his best game of his life against the Bengals. The last time these saddest part yeah. is the saddest part is that that play continued and he's, he's a free agent at the end of the year. You hate to see it happen. Guys like that. Yeah. It's brutal. It's brutal. Um, anyways, really excited about this matchup. 
Denzel Ward, Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase, Denzel Ward. They should just have to go one on one, no safety over the top, and you should mic them up. And we should be able to pay nine ninety nine pay per view for two cameras on each guy and be able to hear everything that's said. This matchup should be so much fun. Obviously, Ward had the pick six last year. Neither of these guys played on Monday Night Football. Jamar Chase telling me multiple times, and not just me, any media member that has asked, hey, yeah, Denzel Ward's the best corner I faced as a rookie, and I think he's the best in the league. That's great. You know who else thinks he's the best in the league? Jamar Chase thinks he's the best receiver in the league. So if it's best corner, best receiver, that'll be a hell of a lot of fun. So that's the matchup that I'm excited about the most. Now, will that determine the game? It certainly can. Right, The pick six completely changed the way that game went last year because the Bengals were moving the ball, felt like they had a lot of momentum. The The Browns didn't have any momentum going into that game. You had all the OBJ stuff. Pick six happens, and boom, it just really kind of switched gears and, and made things tough on the Bengals. So, yeah, I, I do think that this matchup could potentially determine the game, and I think Chase wants to get Ward back a bit um, and, and vice versa. I think Ward wants to stick it to Joe Burrow again like he did last year, former Ohio State teammates. Burrow did say on Wednesday how much they loved each other and, and how close they are. So it's cool that they're close, but I, I know that uh, Chase and Ward, that matchup is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be interesting to see if the Bengals can keep the success of their offense going. We've talked about it a lot on the Locked On Bengals side of things. This offense in the last four weeks has been the best offense in the NFL. They've been the best passing offense. They've been the second best rushing offense. And this is by EPA per play and by things like success rate. And a lot of that rushing success is buoyed by their performance against the Carolina Panthers in week nine. And talking about the running games in this one a little bit here, I do think that even though Deshaun Watson is playing quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, that offense, based on how he played last week, unless they're feeling really confident about him this week, they're not going to change their stripes right away. I think they are still going to lean into Nick Chubb. And I think that if you want to beat the Browns, that needs to be the first priority. I, you think you still have to worry about Cooper. He's been really good at receiver. David Njoku, really good tight end. And and Deshaun Watson hypothetically has the ability to get the, the ball to those guys down the field. But to me, that's where the Bengals defense needs to start their game plan. And, and I think is where they're starting their attention. And we've seen the last few weeks how they've been throwing extra resources at the perceived strength of their opponent against the Titans selling out to stop the run against the Chiefs selling out to stop the pass. We might see a slightly modified version of one of those plans this week, but on the other side of things, this Browns defense hasn't been great defending the run. They were awful defending the run. The first time these teams played in the Bengals could not run the ball at all. Since then, they seem to have figured some things out in their running game. That could be a big factor this week, especially as we talk about that Miles Garrett matchup and, and trying to slow him down, keep him honest out there. And I know he's good against the run too, but just preventing him from being able to pin his ears back on every down, staying ahead of the chains, not getting behind the chains, these sorts of things, these, these sorts of uh, situational things. To tilt that in the Bengals' favor, the run game could have a lot to say with that. So seeing if the Bengals can come out and run the ball this week, could, could be part of what helps their offense stay on track against the team that they've had some some struggles against uh, over the last couple of years, guys. I, I agree, and I actually like James, um, James's point, because you're talking he likes about – oh, Of course, you got the green shirt on you, repping the company. Look at him go over there, Jake. But, you know, you talk about – you know, I, 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 I don't want to short – come anybody else on the Bengals, but I mean, Chase Daniel is, I mean, uh, you know, Jamar Chase is your best weapon on the offensive side of the ball. And it, by no means am I disrespecting anybody else on that side, obviously. Um, but this now, you know, we had a Martin Emerson mashup with T Higgins the first time you're going to have Greg Newsom to play the nickel. He's going to match up with Boyd. You're going to have Denzel, um, you know, for the Bengals passing game versus the Browns secondary, you know, it's all guns ablaze. Everybody's going out there. It's top shelf guys all around. Um, and there's going to be a lot of chippiness. We know this and we know the way, you know, these two franchises look at each other. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for I, I think James's matchup is, is probably the biggest one here. And I mean, if you just want to say Ward versus Chase or you want to say Bengals wide receiver versus, you know, Browns cornerbacks, you know, Greg Newsom had a great week last week. Um, you know, Martin Emerson has been fantastic. I, I can't even, there's not, there's not enough superlatives we can put on this. 
uh, for what Martin Emerson you know has done for this team. And the thing is, is he's different from the fact he's longer, he's bigger. Um, you know, I'm sure somebody in that war room said, "Hey, look, we got T. Higgins. Let's not worry." For you know, Jamar Chase is good, but you know, T. Higgins, you know, is a tough guy to find a matchup for at the cornerback position. That's probably where the game is going to be won. It's going to be won by you know, do the Browns cornerbacks have a better day than the Bengals wide receivers? It could, it could, and that's uh, that's my style. Talking skill players, talking downfield. Hopefully, hopefully they protect. Just tell me the weather's not going to be. And a we get before we did all this. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, honestly, the Bengals are going to throw it regardless. Some, you know, that now they've shown that they, they can run it and we'll see if that can hold up and this offensive line can hold up. And while there's a key that I, I want to mention as we dive into our predictions and we can do that coming up next on this locked on battle of Ohio crossover betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info stats news and analysis get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports we've got it all at betonline.net and if you love sports podcasts you can find those at betonline as well we're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, fellas, we got to pause the podcast for a second. Let's take a second, take a time out, Jake. Stop the recording because we got to try the new Built Bar reimagined flavors. Locked on Bengals listeners know how much I love Built Bars. Well, now they got a, co- a cookie dough topper, coconut brownie bar, a coconut brownie topper. They got white chocolate peppermint granola. All of these, I haven't been able to try them all yet. It's why you need to get your hands on some Built Bars. Why it's the number one protein bar on the planet. If you're new to Locked on Bengals and you haven't heard me talk about it, well, OGs oh know how much I love Built Bars. High in calories, low in sugar, low are, are in high in protein, low in calories, low in sugar. Wow, I got that wrong. That see see how long it's been. Point is, I'm excited. Built bars are back, and you need to get your hands on these right now by going to built.com. Use promo code Locked On15 and get 15% off. Don't delay. Go there now. High in protein, low in calories, low in sugar. Nailed it. Promo code Locked On15 at built.com. Mm. It has been too long since we've talked about those protein-packed chocolate bars of goodness. But, James, before we get to the predictions, you guys just want to talk about the passing game. I'm over here trying to talk about the run game, trying to talk about the trenches. Yeah, That's fine. What's the the last matchup you want to hit before we go predictions? Well, it's game script and in the fact that the Bengals are a drop-back passing team that are okay with running it occasionally. The Browns Mm -hmm. have a good pass rush and like to run the ball. So when the Browns get up early, it's a really bad matchup for the Bengals. So what do the Bengals need to do? They they need to get off to a better start. Can't have pick sixes. Can't have early turnovers. You can't give the Browns confidence. Harass Watson early. Don't let him get into a rhythm early. And then offense move the ball and punch it in when you get down there. And if you get off to an early advantage, if, if you get off to an early advantage, I think it will go a long way. What do you got, Jeff? Um, well, your choice of words there may not have been good for the locked on Browns fans as far as Deshaun Watson. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're the Bengals, look, I mean, I don't even notice what I said for what it's nah, I don't know what you said either, man. Well, harassing and Deshaun Watson in the same sentence. Oh, <laughs> we can't. Yep. It happens. Yeah. It happens. I, I meant make look, him uncomfortable on the But even still, field. but for the Bengals, look, until he is the old Deshaun Watson, you don't know what you got. And you watched that tape last week, you know, I mean, I'm sure, you know, yeah, he was really, really good, but wow, it doesn't look like, you know, how quick does this come? Does it come in game two? Is it going to take the entire good. entity of the rest of this season? We'll see. I mean, and and that, you know, it's a big key to it, but the Browns already have the recipe here. They know what the recipe is to win these games versus the Bengals. It's going to require, you know, obviously, a couple of throws from Deshaun Watson and some timely throws. But the Browns think they know what the recipe is to win these games against the Bengals. Um, the Bengals know what the recipe has been for them to lose these games. I mean, so everybody knows, and it, it's when everybody knows each other this well, and you know, what I, we do well, and it's always we try to take away what you do, and it's been the same thing here. Um, but you know, you have Joe Burrow, you have all his weapons. Um, Perrine has been an absolute beast the last couple of weeks. I, I was stunned just you know watching what he was able to do here. Um, I understand Joe Mixon's going to be back. We'll see what capacity that brings to it. Um, but it, it, it's, it's certainly going to be a fun one. Um, you know, Browns, I mean, this is, you know, 
this will tell whether how much the last four games will actually mean for this year. Um, so, you know, and I mean, we've been trying to, you know, go with this, you know, six and zero to close it out, um, which we hope can be the case here. And right now, the way it plays out, this is absolutely, absolutely the biggest hurdle standing in front of them to close out the regular season for the Browns. You talk about making Deshaun Watson uncomfortable in the pocket. Trey Hendrickson, not a name we've mentioned yet on this podcast, I believe. And if there is one matchup that you you really might feel good about as a Bengals fan, it's Trey Hendrickson, Jedrick Wills out there in, in a pass rushing situation. I think Jedrick Wills, you know, Joel Batonio, really good. Wyatt Teller, really good. Jack Conklin, really good. Froholt has been serviceable. And I, I do like DJ Reader in there. And, and that should be a strength on strength matchup with the guards. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how Froholt does with Reader. But Wills versus Hendrickson could be a fun one uh, in terms of the Bengals' best pass rusher going against a potential weak link. Uh, and, and a big challenge. That might be bad for you guys, though, because Jed had a bad week last week. So usually, Jed, it's one step back and then it's one step up. And we have these conversations throughout social mm-hmm. media, you know, every single day about Jedrick Wills. Um, but yeah, no, I mean Trey Hendrickson is a fantastic player. He's got like a he's got an old school pass rush game to him. I, I, he's a guy I, we really liked, and actually when he was a free agent leaving New Orleans, we were kind of hoping. Um, but you know, you guys were to check. I don't think the Browns were comfortable with Wright at the time. It'll be an interesting matchup, nonetheless. But guys, that that's a lot of matchups, and there's more that we could get into. David Njoku, another tight end after the Bengals, did a pretty good job on Tav- Travis Kelsey last week, along with Amari Cooper. Am- Amari Cooper, man, I messed it up two days in a row now. Who uh, will be? the primary passing threats for the Bengals to deal with without Chidobe Awuzie as, as far as uh, Cooper goes. But let's get into those predictions, guys. Mm-hmm. The Bengals' heavy, heavy favorites in this one in Cincinnati. Yep. How do you guys see this one going? I'm taking the Bengals. And, <laughs> you know, I, I was taking the Bengals going into the Monday night game, and it was uh, it, it didn't work out that way. But look, they have the better quarterback. Their offensive line is playing better. They're, they're playing for more. And, and here's the difference, I think. They should be sick and tired of hearing about how the Browns kick their tail as much as they have. And whether or not that's motivation or not, that's just annoying enough to, if they lost their attention, you know, or if they were, eh, just kind of like last week, right? When um, Justin Reed made those comments, Mm -hmm. it was like, just in case you were like wondering if they would be distracted at all or worried about anything, I was like, oh. Well, now they have another little carrot, little nugget uh, to get them uh, t- to Sunday and motivate them a little bit. So I, I don't know the exact score. I, you know, I'll drop a score on our, our Thursday show, which is, you know, or our Friday show. But I, I think the Bengals are going to win this game and, uh, and split with the Browns. And I had them splitting with the Browns, I think, coming into the year. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But, uh, yeah, it may, it may be sort of close. I think Watson's going to play better. But I think the Bengals get off to a better start and they hang on at home. I guess that leaves um, the Browns. They just what they do well, and obviously it's different than other teams. Seeing as you know, Cincinnati ended up going to the Super Bowl last year. What the Browns do well, it, it's just something where it kind of gives just like a, a funk to Cincinnati. Um, the thing is going to be, you know, will Coach Stefanski stick with the emphasis of trying to run the ball, and can they with the, obviously DJ Reader coming back? Uh, can they continue to get after Joe Burrow like they've shown the ability to do at times? Um, and, you know, will Deshaun Watson at least do enough? Look, I mean, you can't expect to be a team that played for the Super Bowl the previous season by going 12 to 22 for 131. That's not going to do it. It's not going to cut it. There's just no way. Um, but until, and I've said, until I see the Browns lose to the Bengals the way they're currently constructed, because it just seems like it just doesn't work. I mean, yes, the Bengals, they could beat, look, the Bengals could beat anybody. And it is legit. I'm not dissing you guys. I think there's, you know, they're certainly in play to be the number one overall seed, certainly with Buffalo with a couple injuries now. That certainly gives them that opportunity. But it's just like something where, like, it just doesn't click. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the Browns, the few things they do well is always an issue for Cincinnati. So until I see that Cincinnati can overcome it and Jonah Williams can, you know, make Miles Garrett basically a guy who is on the field, but not a guy who's destroying it until they can find a way to, you know, keep Nick Chubb from you know being the player that he is, I think the Browns will win. Um, some of it is also baked into the fact that, you know, this is probably, this is, I mean, we know this is the last stand for 2022 if the Browns don't win. I don't have high playoff hopes for this team. Uh, I'm not one of these ones sitting here at 4.8. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's still a chance. No, I mean, I'm not going that route. 
for me, it's more about getting ready for 2023 at this point. Um, so, but it, it just doesn't seem like the, the few flaws that the Bengals have, it seems like it, it's always a bigger amplified issue when they play against the Cleveland Browns. Here's, here's what I think is different this year in this game. The Bengals are playing the best football they've played in the last two years right now. They've made strides schematically on offense in particular. On defense, they've continued their variable and adaptable approach. DJ Reader's return could certainly make an impact. They're, they're relatively healthy, missing Chidobe Abuzie, obviously, and that is a big loss, but they're relatively healthy. And the offense, like I said, is playing like the best offense in the NFL over the last four weeks and probably over the last seven weeks if you take that Browns game even into account when the offense did struggle. And I think that they have found something that to me looks consistent, that to me looks sustainable. And obviously Miles Garrett can make this go out the window. Turnovers are a big X factor. The Joe Burrow has been taking care of the ball. There have, I know there have been interceptions, but they've been off of deflections. They've been off of batted passes. They haven't been him misfiring as much. Like it's not like he's making a bunch of turnover worthy plays. So I think that will be very interesting. We've seen this team go against two teams that I think are better than the Browns in the Titans and the Chiefs, and they came out of both of those games on top and in very different ways. And so that will certainly be the challenge for the Bengals this week. But uh, I, I do think that the big difference this year compared to previous years is uh, previous games is, is the form of the Bengals coming into the game. Last year in that first game, they're coming off a loss to the Jets. The prior week, this year going into that game on um, Monday Night Football, they're, they're starting to find their footing a little bit. But then, you know, the Browns coming off a big loss, that's another difference. It seems like every time these teams play, the Browns are coming off a loss and looking to, to get back into the win column. The Browns on a two-game winning streak this time around. So, so some differences uh, that are not necessarily X's and O's things or Jimmy and Joe's things, but uh, some of them are. And, and I think that those will be interesting. For sure. And Part of it was you mentioned the Bengals trying to find themselves. That in I know the Browns were shorthanded too and didn't have Ward, but not having Chase, it was uh, mm -hmm. clearly an issue, especially when they got behind. And now that they have him, that's the thing is if they get behind this this go round, at least you have that equalizer that could potentially make big plays to get you back into it. It was uh, there wasn't that on on that Monday night game. So look, it should be interesting. It's a rivalry game. Also, at some point, the streak is going to end. Sorry, Browns fans. It might be this week. It might not be. But at some point, it's going to end. And uh, I'm, I'm going to bet that it's this week. And Joe Burrow going to go on to be like a three-time MVP. Maybe win a Super Bowl. First ballot Hall of Famer. How did I go 1-14 against the Cleveland Browns in my career? Yes. <laughs> Something crazy like that or whatever. But look, you know, as I was telling the guys before we recorded, you know, uh, obviously Bengals 3-0 over the last – uh, games against the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Joe Burrow hasn't beaten the Look, sometimes these numbers don't mean a darn thing. They don't. Um, you know, obviously, you know, lost last year, went to the Super Bowl. Um, so sometimes people amplify numbers, I think, to, to make them more than they are. Look, to the Browns Bengals, it's a rivalry. It's always going to be a rivalry. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see the way the rest of the division shakes out. But I mean, this looks like it could maybe be the, you know, if not the top. I mean, it, it looks like it's going to be, a, you know, a three team AFC North probably for at least a season or two here, why Pittsburgh, you know, basically regroups after having a quarterback for two decades or whatever. And the final thing I'll just go with is the Browns have played a lot more inspired the last two weeks. It was the week before Deshaun came back. And then last week, I mean, a guy like Tony Fields has barely seen the field in almost a year and a half here. Um, you get a forced fumble, you get a fumble recovery, you get a, you know, an interception off a bat at ball, um, also had a pass deflection. It, it seems like there's more life to this Browns team right now. Um, yeah, Deshaun Watson certainly got to play better to support all of that. But, you know, hey, it's, it's always a fun one. It, it, it's never dull, Browns, Bengals, never. As it will be in the division, divisional rivalries, Battle of Ohio, all these things that they bring out some, some interesting games, and we'll probably have another one this Sunday. That's going to do it for this episode of Crossover Thursday. For more on the Browns, find Jeff over on Lockdown Browns, where they'll have you covered for the rest of the week. And you can find myself, Jake Lisko, and – James Rapine on Locked On Bengals, taking you the rest of the way this season every day with your Bengals coverage. So until the game, or until tomorrow, sorry, we've got one more day of episodes this week. So we'll be back tomorrow for both of our shows. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of Crossover Thursday. And you can find more, as always, on the Locked On Podcast Network.